Okay, back again. Another lovely day here. I'm getting sick of saying it. Every day it's lovely. Uh, so what I've got going on here is uh, I've made the drip channels and the internal kick that comes up and that'll run the full length of this panel from here all the way up to roughly you know somewhere around here I'll probably cut it in line with this and then work forward from there it slightly curves in so so I've got these two and uh, there they are so that's the outside edge of the drip channel and that's the inside lip that curls up and uh, they're looking pretty good this was uh, out of that $20 pile of steel I got so it's funny I was actually going to get some pieces cut and uh, broken on their sheet metal break and uh, you know as luck would have it they had these in their skip bin so in their metal recycling bin so I had like four or five lengths of that so anyway uh, I've broken these edges today and yesterday so I've tried to pretty much copy the the distance of the the original rain gutter it's not quite as sharp but I don't think that really will matter um, in the long run and uh, this is quite thick steel too and it's zinc anneal so this won't rust um, not like this black steel that they call it this uh, mild steel that they used for this stuff so just to give you an idea this one goes up there like that all the way along and uh, I've got one for the other side and um, my first test piece that I made that'll be going up here right along but now I've got to the point where I need to make these ones on a curve so this is this is uh, the thickness that I need and it comes around and it'll join up to this one here so I'll make these in two smaller parts so one for the other side as well um, so I'll have the two so by the end of today I'll have the two sides the two corners and then the back but not cut so um, then what I'll be able to do is uh, tomorrow start cutting this and what I've got, I've got a bit of a plan what I'm going to do this is uh, welded on I'm just going to cut straight through I'm going to come in this distance here from this lip to here is a given amount so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in sorry, that distance plus another three mils three millimeters more and then I'm just going to make a line and I'm going to cut with an angle grinder straight through and that should be able to um, cut through the spot weld that's there I'm guessing that they spot welded the drip rail onto this before they put the roof on that's how I'm guessing that they did it but I'll find out I'll do a small section and then I reckon that'll pretty much cut straight through the spot weld halfway and then I'll just grab a pair of pliers and then just wiggle this off all the way along and then obviously I'll just have to clean that top edge and then when, because I've got um, a little bit of room off this top it'll sort of go up and then curl a little bit when the drip rail sits on it I'll be able to weld it on the inside and I won't affect this too much um, that's the plan I don't really want to kill this metal uh, the paintwork on the metal that's that's really what I'm going for here so that being said uh, I have to tackle these now and it's quite simple I just um, just get the old flower bags that I've got and I sit them up there and I just go through my process and uh, you know, just rub, rub the edge right around quite nice and quick. 
I do that, now I've got that, and I just measure, I make a mark at that point, and then a mark at the other point, and these will be mirrored anyway, so one pattern will do both, and then, um, so I go down here, and you can see the mark that I've got, and uh, then I add my 10 mils, 11 mils, on the outside edge of that, and then my distance that these are to there, I add that to the inside, and I go around and I make a line, and then I add this much, and I add that to the end of that. And then what I end up with is something that looks like that. Um, I'm still to finish off. I've made a few scribe marks here, so uh, quick and dirty. This is a little extra, so there's that. And I cut it off there, cut it off there. So that's my piece. Um, and then all I do is I take that and I cut it out. And then I'll just find a suitable candidate from my pile of stuff that I've got. This is really thick, this one. I don't think I'll be able to use it. I have the other one down there. And I've got a piece here. Or I might even be able to just use a bit of uh, of this sheet metal. Uh, this is a slightly thinner gauge. I probably shouldn't use that. But anyway, I'll work it out and I'll uh, bring you back. Just so I'll let you see the process. It's quite quick. I mean, as I said, I've probably got three hours invested in those. Only because I don't have a $50,000 or more break to be able to break those finger break but uh, see the thing is that you know if you can work out how to do this stuff without all the big machinery you can get away with a lot so you know that's what I use and I did that whole thing I've got two heads two thicknesses and uh, I don't need a big piece of machinery sitting in my garage, that just sits in a bucket. A little bit of fine tuning with a hammer. Um, a little bit of fine tuning with a hammer and a dolly just to um, tidy up the edges. I didn't go too overboard because uh, once it's on the vehicle then I can fine tune it. Um, but as of right now it's, it's fairly good. I'm happy with that. So, yeah. And then I'll just grab a pair of pliers when it's on there and roll it out every now and again trying to match where it is on the vehicle so I'm taking that that's one there it looks like there's one there as well so um, I'll just make marks and come through with a pair of pliers but uh, you know this has come along quite quick it'll be good to have these in too because there's not there's not a lot of strength in this back section right now and it'll be good to actually tie all this in together um, because it's not it's not tied in down the bottom there and there's no floor pans in the vehicle at all so this is sort of held up by a wing and a prayer at the moment and a couple of buckets so that's my three hundred thousand dollar framing jig anyway I'll bring you back when I get something else done see ya